Right, Ryan, hope you're well, mate. I'm going to show you now how to take the stuff that you've done in machine, import it into logic one way or another, and then manipulate it in logic. So I suppose the first way that you can do this is arguably much simpler to get your stuff over from machine into logic, but then you perhaps don't have as much uh, tweakability once it's over in logic. So I'm just going to create a new track, software instrument, create. Just load machine up and um, just go for a stereo setup at the moment. Just one stereo pair as an output. Just going to load a project. Let's just go for that thing that I've been working on uh, during the during the course. And now what I'm going to do is drop down menu. Well, first of all, select the relevant group that I'd like to uh, import over into the logic project. Next up, the relevant uh, relevant pattern. Then from the drop down menu, pattern drag mode, I'm going to select audio. Finally, get hold of this little joypad type looking thing. Keep your finger held down on the mouse. What it's actually doing is rendering that in real time to give me an audio file. When it says done, ready to drag, we can then drag that over into the logic project. Just remove the patterns from the machine. There you go, there's your, there's your drum patterns. So if you wanted to then say import the chord across, uh, go for group D, select the relevant pattern. Pattern drag mode should already be set to audio so you don't need to change that. Uh, get hold of the joypad type thing, keep the finger held down whilst it renders that for you. When it says done, you can just drag that across into Logic's arrangement. Once you've done that, remember to right click just to remove the pattern from uh, the arrangement of machine otherwise that chord is going to get played twice once from the logic arrangement once from the machine arrangement and you might get some weird phase type effects so just right click that to, to get rid so that's one way of doing things you can import the patterns that you've made in machine across into logic by just making sure that from this drop down menu here you've selected pattern drag mode audio keep your finger held down after you've selected the relevant pattern on this joypad thing and then when it's ready you can just drop it into your logic arrangement but you don't have as much tweakability working with audio than you do if we import the midi data or import these patterns as midi files into logic um, work with MIDI and then we can still tweak the instruments we've got going on in the machine uh, setup. So let me just delete that. In fact, just let me delete that track altogether. I'm going to make myself a new software instrument. This time I'm going to make sure that this option multi timbral is selected and I'm going to make sure that it says 16 here and we'll come back to what this means in a moment so I'm just going to create that and get rid of that first audio track now so we've got 16 tracks each called instrument one I'm just going to load in machine into any one of these Again, let's just go for stereo for the time being. Now, if we just scroll down that track list, you can see that they're actually all essentially the same track. You see machine is loaded onto each of those tracks. I'm just going to unfold this little section here. And this tells me what MIDI channel that track is transmitting on. 
Now Logic can transmit on any one of 16 MIDI channels. You get 16 MIDI channels per MIDI connection. And I suppose the MIDI connection in this case is uh, the one between machine and Logic. There's just one MIDI uh, MIDI connection. In the, in the physical world, this would be, say for example, a synthesizer that you've connected up via an old school five pin MIDI lead to your MIDI interface. You could transmit on one of 16 channels down that MIDI lead and it's the same between machine and Logic. So let me just uh, load up that same project. This is where things get perhaps a little bit more complicated, but like I say, more tweakability in the in the long long run. So I'm going to go to that same drop down menu, and this time I'm going to go pattern drag mode. I'm going to select MIDI. So let's take the drums first of all. I'm going to select, for argument's sake, an area where, a scene rather, where we've got uh, the full full loop playing. So I'm just going to mute everything else for the time being. Now you can see you can actually um, arrange in machine and mix down in Logic. But what I want to do is take the patterns that I've got in Machine and import them over into, into Logic. So to do this, make sure that you've got the relevant pattern selected. So we need drums selected. You could just click there where it says pattern, pattern eight to select the pattern down here. Or you could select drums and then just make sure that pattern eight is selected along here. Now, when I go to drag the, the joypad looking thing this time, we get this thing called Sound MIDI Batch Setup. This window called Sound MIDI Batch Setup. Now you've got two options. You have sound to MIDI channels, and you've got sound to MIDI notes. Now, if you've got something like a drum kit, where each of the sound slots is taken up with a different sample of some description, um, then you would want to pick the sounds to MIDI notes option and you can leave the root note as it is. If you've got something like group B where we've got the bass instrument, what you would need to do is if you want to play different pitches of sound, you need to make sure that sounds to MIDI channels is selected. So let's just go for the drum kit first of all, sounds to MIDI notes, leave the root note as it is, click apply. And now we can get hold of what is now a MIDI, MIDI clip. Let me just set the locators around that. Uh, and let me just remove that from the arrangement like that. So remember, if we don't do that, then it's pattern's going to play once there, once in machine, and we might get some weird phase effects. I'm just going to remove the drum pattern from machine. Fingers crossed. There we go. So that is um, the drums imported over into Logic. And you can do that for obviously any drum pattern. Just uh, put the playhead where you want to drop the pattern. Um, select a drum pattern. So let's go for seven for argument's sake. In fact, rather than uh, putting the playhead there, you could just drag and drop wherever necessary. You can hear how you get that weird phase effect because I've got pattern seven playing. Just remove that and then there we go. Let's hear what this one sounds like. You get the general idea. So you're using machine as like a, an artist sketch pad, a bit of a, you know, get, getting ideas together before you then import them into logic, import each pattern one at a time and then you can you know manipulate that in logic you can even augment the patterns in logic you can go into the uh, piano roll start moving notes around start positioning extra notes whatever you want to do um let's add some bass to that so i'm going to click the joypad thing again and the sound midi batch setup 
dialog box should come up. Let me just cancel that. If it doesn't, drop down menu, sound MIDI batch setup. This time we need to do sounds to MIDI channels. I'm going to click apply. I'm going to get a hold of the joypad thing. I'm going to drop that in like that. Just put the locators on again. I'm just going to mute the drums. Let's just see if the bass is working. Now, why isn't that working at the moment? What we need to do is we need to assign this bass instrument a slightly different MIDI channel. So I'm just going to scroll down to this MIDI track. You see this is currently transmitting on MIDI channel 2. Now your sound MIDI batch setup is for the entire group, but what we can actually do is right click more specifically on the sound slot and that sound slot also has its own MIDI settings. So at the moment that's receiving on channel 1. I'm going to switch that and tell it to receive on channel 2 because this track is transmitting on channel 2. Now fingers crossed this time. Just remove the pattern from. So there we go. We need to just make sure that the channel, MIDI channel here that the track is transmitting on is the same MIDI channel that the sound that you're wanting to trigger is receiving on. Sound MIDI settings, you need to make sure, just going back to these a second, as well as the channel, the relevant channel being selected, you don't really need to worry about the low note and the high note and the root note, they should uh, be set up automatically for you. You just need to make sure that the enable box is checked as well. Right, so let's move over to something a little bit more complicated. Group C, where we've got four different instruments on one group. So there's the pattern as it stands in machine. It's not been triggered by logic, it's actually triggered from a pattern in machine. Just a uh, drop down menu, sound MIDI batch setup. I'm going to select sound to MIDI channels again. I'm going to apply that. Watch what happens now. If I get hold of and then drop into the Logic project, you see how each instrument has been dropped onto its own separate track. Now again, if I hit play as it stands, It's not going to sound as we want it to sound at the moment. Now these tracks, because I've selected 16 part multi timbral, uh, the MIDI channel that they're transmitting will be in sequence. So that's um, MIDI channel 3, 4, 5 and 6. So what we need to do is go to, the, uh, go to group C, right click on the first instrument, sound MIDI settings, just make sure that that is receiving on MIDI channel 3. Right click the next one down, make sure that's received on MIDI channel 4. Next one down. MIDI channel 5. And next one down, right click, MIDI channel 6. Let's just see how that works now. And so on and so forth. So let's just do the chord one more time. So anything that you want to play tones, you need to make sure that sounds to MIDI, uh, 
can't remember what it says now. Uh, sound to MIDI channels is selected. Anything like a drum kit, just do sounds to MIDI notes where you're just triggering samples rather than playing pitches as such. Then what you need to do, right click, sound MIDI settings on the specific sound. Just need to make sure that the correct MIDI channel corresponding with the MIDI channel that uh, this track is transmitting is selected. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, MIDI channel seven. Okay, and that should trigger the chord. Let's just check that by muting everything else. So you've got a maximum of 16 channels for one machine instance in Logic. So you can only trigger 16 instruments simultaneously from Logic in one instance of machine. So it probably, let's have a look. So we've got one for drums, one for bass, four lead textures, um, that's six, seven, eight for vocals. That's all I've got so far. Um, so the space for seven other instruments in there. If you find that you need him to trigger more than 16 instruments, what you would have to do is just perhaps rename all those tracks accordingly, machine instance one, and then you'd have to create another software instrument, multi timbral and you just have to load up another instance of machine. Now at the moment, if we go to the mixer, you can see that all that is just happening on one stereo out at the moment. You could take it one step further if you wanted to and um, make this a multi-output machine. Now you have to do that when you actually load machine up in the first place, which is a bit of a pain since I've just done all that work, but let me just delete that. Just gonna unload machine. I can leave the fact that uh, it's multi timbral up there, but this time AU instruments, native instruments, machine. Rather than picking stereo, which would just be one output, I'm gonna go multi output, select one of the multi output options. Uh, for argument's sake, I'm just gonna go for 16 stereo outputs, but you can see there's loads of different iterations to choose from. 16 stereo outputs. So as it stands, it doesn't look as if much has happened, but subtle difference is on the stereo output track, or sorry, rather the instrument track now, you've got this little plus button. So let me just, one more time, let's load up that arrangement. And I'm just gonna get drums, bass, and the chord in there just there. Sound to MIDI notes, that's fine for the drums. Let me get that in there. Right, so it can be quite handy to have each of these different elements on its own separate channel in Logic so you can apply uh, different effects to different, different channels. So to do this, I'm gonna press this little plus button. I'm gonna do that for argument's sake, three times. Auxiliary one, let's call that drums. Auxiliary two, bass. Auxiliary three, chord. To get rid of them, you could just press the minus button if needs be. What I'm gonna do now, you can see at the moment, everything's still coming down the main output of machine, but I'm gonna select the, uh, the drums, select group, select output, moment obviously everything's going to the master output I'm going to tweak that and there you see I've selected output 2 and that's coming down the new drums auxiliary track that I've created in logic let's go bass group output There we go, and then finally the chord, chord group, output. 
And there you go. So now you can apply different effects from Logic to the different groups that you've got going on in your machine song. You could split that down even further. You could send the sound to a different output if you wanted to. Up to you, really. So that's how to make use of machine in uh, in Logic. Um, one thing I would say is it's probably easier to, if you wanted to use machine with Logic, like I say, to sketch together some ideas using machine. Obviously, it's great at, um, at getting ideas together using the 16 pads. And then once you've done that, import the patterns across the Logic and then arrange the patterns in Logic rather than trying to have some sort of hybrid between the two um, because it can be quite confusing uh, with the way that the arrangement system works in machine. It doesn't necessarily go nicely over the top of the arrangement system in Logic. It can be quite confusing. So stick to arranging in either machine totally or if you want to use machine in conjunction with Logic, make your patterns in machine, export them over to Logic and do your arranging in Logic. Hope that helps, mate. Cheers.